How do speakers make music? Michael in Ireland is asking that question. And Michael writes, Paul, despite your explanation, uh, music reproduction means, uh, remains an absolute mystery to me. How can my music system, in particular the speakers, recreate this detailed image of some 50 instruments in a symphonic orchestra, each with its own tone and timbre and characteristic? I don't think watts, ohms, frequencies, signal to noise ratio, etc., explain much. Boy, you're right about that, Michael. They don't explain squat. <laughs> it's a bit like saying H2O instead of water. You want to drink a glass of cold spring water on a hot day or swim in the ocean to know what it is. What's your thoughts on this? My thoughts on this are fairly complex and I'll try and break them down. We struggle to understand complex systems. It really is beyond our imagination. Imagine trying to visualize a thousand of something, let alone trillions, billions, millions, e even a hundred sometimes is pretty hard to imagine, but I find anything over say a hundred, two hundred, just I can conceptualize the idea of a big group of things, but I can't picture a thousand of anything. I can't picture how I am just a collection of tiny moving subsystems. I, I seem whole. I mean, that doesn't make sense to me. I, I mean, my brain is, is, is in, in its simplest form, is, are these synapses. And how does that work? And I think we get trapped in, you know, this, this whole idea of, of um, well, we don't understand it, so it's either magic or there's some uh, supreme, you know, being or something that it must control. Because we can't picture, we can't understand complex systems. We just can't. Our minds can't wrap around it. All we can do is have a little faith, a little trust in th that it does work. Because you know it works, right? So here, here's a driver. So, and, and with apologies to Ohm's Law listeners, I'm just holding a standard driver. Oh, I had to pick a heavy one too. My God. Um, and what, what do we know? Well, you don't have to see a driver to know that what this driver does is it moves up and down, in and out, right? Just boom, 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 boom. And we can probably picture how that makes a steady state tone. Because if we were to draw a steady state tone, you've seen it before. Just picture a S, a series of linked S's on their side. So instead of an S standing upright, it goes and it lays down. So S and just in a horizontal pattern, and that is moving this cone in and out, in and out, up and down. And we get a woo. Why? Because it's compressing the air in an exact analog of that steady state tone it's moving my eardrum in concert, not to make a pun, with the pressure moving in and out, and my brain registers that as something that is a steady state tone. Now, if I want to add some dynamics to it, some, some, add something, I could have the tone start and stop. So, ooh, oh, Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, that's the same tone, best I can do, stopping and starting. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Now, if I go, ooh, 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 that's the tone changing frequency, right? So we can, we can kind of grasp all of that. That's, we kind of get that, but already, I'll bet you can't picture in your mind what's really happening, which is those S's are getting bunched closer together and then farther away. It's like, whoop, that change in frequency, which is easy for me to do and easy for you to hear, is really compressing those ups and downs, those, those sideways S's into smaller and smaller areas, which vibrate the speaker cone faster and my ear faster. 
Now, if we were to add to that a second person over here, which I can't, I can't do, then you would hear two tones, right? You'd hear me and you'd hear Bob. Well, it's the, what, what the ear hears and what the speaker reproduces is an amalgam of those two sounds. Because at the end of the day, you have one carrier, air. Sound doesn't work in a vacuum, we know that. We have air moving, and with me on a steady state tone, it's kind of easy to see the air moving back and forth, back and forth. Now we add a second thing that's going faster. I can't, <laughs> that's like rubbing your head and patting your stomach, right? Um, now the air is gonna come out in a very different pattern. Still one carrier, still just the air, moving back and forth slowly and quickly. And when we look at an orchestra with 50 players, now what we see is this very complex grouping moving one carrier, the air, to our ear. And in the same way, this speaker just moves in a complete analog of that, com that combined sound of that single bit of air moving in and out quickly and, and slowly. And that's the simple explanation behind it. Can you visualize it? I can, because I can see it on a scope and I get the idea of it, but it looks like a jumble, right? I mean, that's what's gonna happen. If you get a chorus, I mean, think of something like Beethoven's Ninth Symphony with a, you know, a, a hundred piece chorus and a hundred and fifty piece orchestra. You've got two hundred and fifty sound sources all at once making this wave of sound, but it's just air moving in complex ways. So once it gets past a certain level where our brains can conceptualize and handle it, we can no longer see it and we can no longer understand it. But we know it's there just as much as we know we're alive. Oh man, there is the biggest spider moving along the floor. He is cool. <laughs> I get distracted easy. Anyway, I gotta let this little guy move. Hey, he's cool. All right, you know what spiders, I used to be afraid of spiders. And sp you know what spiders eat? Insects. Yeah, flying insects and things that I don't like around here. And they hang out and they eat all the things I don't like. So. I like spiders. Leave the spiders alone. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thanks. I will talk to you tomorrow.